Let's get into this conversation now. IFP President Emeritus Prince Mangosutu Telezi has expressed shock at what he says are lies being spread about him. Mutelezi says he has been painted as a supporter of uh, the violent killing of people in Phoenix, north of Durban. Well, Prince Mutelezi joins us now uh, to explain exactly his position on what has taken place in Phoenix. Prince Mutelezi, thank you very much uh, for making time to talk to us. What is your official position on the ugly scenes that we have seen come out of Phoenix? Well... When the, troubles, when the problems erupted in Phoenix, our leaders, led by some of our most senior leaders, such as Mr. Naren Singh, for instance, who is our Treasurer General, and other leaders in Devon, went to Phoenix from the very beginning when the problem started there. At that time, there were no killings at all. Hmm. It was just people that were standing up, you know, to, to loot us. Then we... In Lundi, our mayor, our leader, Siposeti Ngobo, the councillors and our members mobilized, contacted the police. Together they created nine stations throughout Lundi, which I visited myself to encourage them to try and protect Lundi. As a result of that, I received some messages from Phoenix from some Indian gentlemen that I even didn't even know, saying to me, can I assist them to, to get more troops? They're admiring the fact that we're taking up the stand, mm. because they were taking up the stand to protect themselves. In fact, I even spoke to the President of the Republic, Ms. Ramaphosa, mm. saying that this, some people in, in Phoenix actually need more backing from the soldiers. So then, and this is actually, actually all that happened. So the killings that took place, took place subsequently. Then Newsroom Africa interviewed me where I was condemning in the strongest possible terms the people that were looting in, in Phoenix and, and encouraging others to do likewise as we had done in London. So then these mischief makers of the uh, political party, which I've found out now, decided now to, to take that posting from the from the newsroom Africa and to place this next to the dead bodies saying that you know in fact I was actually applauding those who have been killed. It had nothing to do with it. There was no nexus whatsoever between the two. Mm, mm. You know, no, nothing this is what happened. Principal tell us so I uh, and, yes. and it's, it's unfortunate that people do this because what it is, in essence, it's a manipulation of an interview to achieve other ends but uh, you've clarified your position I just want to uh, move straight into the trouble that uh, may be brewing in that area we're seeing lots of concern there are planned activities in order to try and bring calm to the area of Phoenix as things stand right. 22 people have been killed in that area as we we're told by the acting minister in the presidency uh, yesterday and these concerns, Prince Telezi, come on the back of what people like Pastor Vusi Dube has been saying, which is uh, that, and I want to quote him directly now, he says, concerns from neighboring communities, uh, particularly in Inanda and Guamashu townships, about the situation in Phoenix is that some people are threatening to attack the Indian residents of Phoenix because they feel black people have been killed without reason. What needs to be done to bring about unity between the residents of Phoenix and neighboring communities? Now, I, I've already said, you know, Mr. Gamble, that my, my, our most senior leaders in Durban, from the very word go, they actually went, they, are, they have been there for, from the word go every day, including people like, this is a well-known, like our uh, chief whip in parliament, Mrs. Naran Singh, you know, to, to actually cooperate with the local leaders in Phoenix to prevent that situation. And it's most unfortunate that, you know, this thing has become racial, actually, when, when it should not become racial. It's most unfortunate, but all that we can do to douse those fires is to continue, our leaders to continue and other political parties also to cooperate with us in order, because Mr. Singh even tried to 
speak to one of our members of parliament from the EFF, uh, member Ms. Tengwa, Tengwa to, to actually cooperate, to try and actually make sure that this doesn't become, become a racial inferno, you know, mm. which we cannot afford. We cannot afford that. Yeah. We cannot, we can't, cannot afford it. We can't afford it. We have lived with the Indian people for, for decades, for decades. They've been here since more than 100 years. And the Indian people and us were oppressed together. Mm. And some of the Indian people actually, I worked, you know, with one of the Swamis to build classrooms, you know, when in, in our movement, the ANC, as I was a member, we're saying that schools must be destroyed. The Divine Life Society and myself, I asked people to pay a rent. We built schools with them. Mm. You know, Fatima, Fatima Mia, who is very well known, was my classmate when I was expelled from Fort Air. I joined them at the University of Natal, and we, they, they also created a, 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 what you call a committee to help African They oppressed themselves, but they helped us. Yeah. You know? Prince Patel, look at brothers and others. Yes. And others. L let me ask you this question, because you've explained the manipulation of the video and placing it next to dead bodies, but there are those who are seeking clarity genuinely so to say your words which said that you were proud of the people for taking action what did you mean what was the context at that time oh you you know you must understand as i've said earlier Ms. Mugambi, that i said that we in ulundi took up a stand and protected ulundi and some people phoned me and uh, the, all the action that I was talking about was exactly what we had done in Lundi when we successfully protected the town of Lundi. I mean, I was talking merely about protection, not about killing anybody or, to, or taking any action to, to do harm to anybody or to, or to any property. Yeah. But I was admiring the fact that we were doing exactly what we did in Lundi, in which I was involved myself at, at my age. I, I went from one station of, of people, nine stations at night, of people who are sitting there, encouraging them. Mm. We took action ourselves. That is the action I was referring to. Are, are you surprised? Are you shocked at the turn of events, the, the racial um, overtones now that have taken over uh, or that have turned in this situation? You know, Mr. Ngamba, I don't know to what extent you may remember yourself. There have been some people, you know, even more recently, who have been trying to fan the flames of racial animosity against the Indians, calling themselves Mazbuye. I mean, this has been happening, you know, openly by these people, openly, being anti-Indian. I mean, there are people who are racist, who have been trying to actually fan the flames of racial animosity. Mm. Mm. So in that sense, I'm not surprised because they are taking advantage of that now to fan the flames of racial animosity against the Indian uh, community. Yeah. Uh, Prince Teresa, you, you are one seasoned politician and who is most familiar with what the ugly apartheid past brought with it when communities were pitted against each other. What would your message be? Yes. What would your message be to the Indian community in Phoenix? Your message to the surrounding African communities in that area? My message is that actually, let us not actually commit suicide. I mean, I've always been at the what you call at the at the at the at the, at the head of social cohesion. Well, in fact, already just now, Ira Gandhi, the grandchild of Mahatma Gandhi, invited me to a prayer on ritual, precisely because I know her when she was a young girl, when I used to use Phoenix, I knew her father, Mani, Manil Gandhi, I used to visit the Gandhi settlement in Phoenix, you know, mm. when she was young. And recently, I mean, that's the extent to which I've been involved. I remember that as ANC, in my leader, Ingos Albert Lutuli, cooperated with Dr. Naika, with Yusuf Tadu. All those are people 
that we used to attend together, huge ra rallies at Nicholas Square in Devon. I mean, that, that's my background. Mm. In fact, when the unfortunate uh, killing of, of Indian people in 1949 took place, I was a student and I, I was active in trying to actually to douse those fires as long ago as, as 1949. Mm. I was then a took my, I was a student then at at Forte University, and during well, that uprising, actually, I was involved that with that. And I've just said now, we live cheek by jowl with the Indian people. The, the people who are employing our people are white people, although the Indian were disadvantaged. But many of our people actually owe their jobs to to, to Indian people, the same employers. We just cannot, we can ill afford now to create animosity between ourselves and the Indian people, with whom we have lived for, for generations, we have generations with them. Mm. Therefore, I appeal to, to our people who may have been hurt and who actually have been, who are all of us quite shocked and stunned by the fact that 22 of our people have been killed in Phoenix. This is very, most unfortunate because, I mean, the, the people who did that are very stupid people because they should have known beforehand that what was likely to follow after that. Yeah. That there'd be feelings of wanting to retaliate. So I, I'm appealing actually at this time. With that history, which I'm telling you, that I've always lived, lived cheek by jowl with, with, with the Indian people. And the Indian people, even though they were oppressed, they were a bit better off than us. They were oppressed, mm -hmm. of course. We were the wretched of the world. I mean, we Africans. Yeah. But ever then, even then, the Indian people, even then, they would extend a hand of friendship to us. Mm. You know, Pr Prince Tedezi. Before we we wrap up our conversation, if there's one thing that we should not do, though, particularly people like you and people like myself, as a, a media practitioner, it is to downplay what clearly has been a feeling that has uh, always been there, that there is this racial tension, particularly in Wazulu Natal. I wonder if you can Absolutely. still hear me. Yes. So, and, and, I go back, and I go back to a song, for example, that was composed by uh, Mbongeni Gema about Indian people. So you see the, the history here. That tension does exist. What needs to be done in order to fix that? Because it would seem that what has been done is to simply paper over the cracks. No, actually, I mean, some of us are committed to social cohesion. Because there is no future in this country if we, we don't promote and consolidate social cohesion. I, I say that there are people, races like Mbongeni Gema, who do things, and this my boy, also people who have been fanning the flames of racism in, the, in this province. But I think those of us who are the majority, I think, while, while it is true that these tensions have, have been there, and that there are some idiotic people who have been fanning them, but I think the rest of us, most of us should actually continue, because as I say personally, we have been living with the Indian people for, for for decades, they have been in this country for more than a hundred years. They are, they, are, they are not actually Indians. They are, they are actually in Af South Africans of Indian extraction. Just as whites are South Africans. You know, I had a quarrel with a, an American gentleman, an African American, when I said that whites of South Africa had become indigents, just like the white Americans have become indigents of the United States. In the same way, they are, they are not actually uh, Indians in the sense of that they, are, they belong to a homeland of India. Then they, 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 their homeland is South Africa, yeah. and we have to live together and, uh, and re re actually acknowledge you know, what you, many good things that we have done together. We have fought for liberation together with the Indian people. I was involved, you know, with uh, my leader, Ingos Albert Tutuli, Dr. Tadu. These are people I knew. Yusuf, in, in your, Yusuf Tadu and others, as long ago as that. I mean, Fatima Mia was my classmate when I was, was from the University of Poitiers. 
Mm. I got, went to the effect. We, we work together. I mean, those of us, uh, you know, are not he, he belong to the guy, to the group that may be preferring tracks. We, we say we must continue to try and, and, and promote social cohesion because it's only by social cohesion that we can actually, actually live together in peace. All right. That, that's my belief. Prince Mahasutu, uh, let me uh, end this conversation and take it back to its genesis, if we can. And you had a, a briefing with the media at the time where you spoke very strongly against what was happening outside the home of the former president, Jacob Zuma. This was before he eventually got incarcerated. And you used the words that it was treasonous what was happening there. So all of what has happened in the past week has happened in the name of the former president being jailed. And you called those events treasonous. How do you reflect today where we are, given from where we come from, as I say, the genesis of what the past week Actually, Mr. Mugambi, I, I really, you know, I'm very, very saddened by what has happened. It is, I still repeat that it is treasonous. Because when people now actually do things that are against our constitution, I mean, we fought very hard for this, for this freedom, for this democracy. You see, when people now start undermining the constitution by not upholding the, you know, the rule of law, then they are no longer, it's no longer a fighting fight. They're actually against what you call the state. And the state comprises of the people of South Africa. They're against all of, all of us. I think it was most unfortunate. While I'm very certain that Mushalozi or His Excellency Jacob Zuma is in such, in such problems, has had such problems, and I sympathize with him and his family. But I, I said even then that I, I regret the fact that the lawyers of Mr. Zuma actually misled him because I, I could see them smiling when he walked out of the Zondo Commission. I could see them smiling, you know, mm. you know, and, and I was surprised that, you know, actually officers of court like that should have encouraged Mr. Zuma to do what he did, which is the reason why he's in jail today. I mean, it's elementary that anyone who did that, especially someone who actually took an, an oath of office as the president of this country to uphold the constitution, to actually be encouraged by his own lawyers to do that. Mm. Prince Tillese, so thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Uh, Prince Mangosu Tillese, uh, the president emeritus of the Ingata Freedom Party.